Whether you're a frequent cruiser or a new cruiser, you might be making some of these main dining room mistakes and they can definitely affect your cruise. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now cruising is not like other types of vacations and when it comes to dining on a cruise, it is not like going to a restaurant at all. And especially over the last couple of years, we have seen some changes. So I think it really is worth going over some of the things that you absolutely want to know about dining on a cruise and some of the mistakes that you absolutely want to avoid. Now in this video, I'm also going to be sharing with you some tips and suggestions to help you to make the most out of your dining experience on your cruise. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, one of the biggest mistakes that I see cruisers making right now in the dining room is assuming that everything in the main dining room is included. Now, a few years ago, this was definitely true, but now, uh, not so much. Now, really, in fairness, most is included. However, be prepared for some things to have an additional charge. Now, you don't have to order them, but expect it. So some things that you might see that have an additional charge are things like a steakhouse restaurant. In some cases, you are going to see that a lobster tail is an extra charge. Now, you might also see some specialty items or special appetizers that the cruise line is going to try to entice you to pay an additional charge to eat that in the main dining room. Now, that being said, don't be afraid to order what you want and give some new things a try. Cruising is a great time to try some things that you normally don't eat at a restaurant at home, or maybe that you don't cook at home. This is the time to do it. And even if you see a couple of appetizers that you'd like to try, even a couple of entrees that you would like to try, maybe you'd like more than one dessert, or you'd like to share that with somebody at the table, just go ahead and ask your waiter. On most cruise lines, this is not a problem at all. Number two, not making dining reservations, in particular when you have open dining. Now, if you don't wanna make a reservation, that's okay, but you do have to be prepared that if you just show up at the main dining room, that you will have a little bit of a wait. Now, what you can do is you can actually make some reservations, usually before your cruise, or otherwise when you do get on the cruise. And I do really suggest that you do that. In particular, try to make your reservations so that they match the shows that you might go to. Now, if you do wanna play it by ear, of course, you can always go to the buffet or just be prepared to wait a little bit. You do have to be a little bit flexible. Now, for those that say, I do not wanna wait, I wanna eat in the main dining room, maybe every night, the same time, then what you're best off doing is actually just choosing the traditional dining. You can usually eat early, so that oftentimes is at about 6 o'clock p.m., or late, which is usually about 8 or 8.30 p.m., but at least that way you know that you have a set dining reservation, and sometimes it does make it actually a little bit easier to plan. Now, please let me know what you prefer, if you prefer traditional dining and traditional dining time, or if you prefer the flexibility of open dining. Being honest, I kind of prefer traditional dining in terms of having the same waiter every night, but I do also like the flexibility of open dining, so I tend to reserve open dining most of the time. Number three, not planning enough time to eat in the main dining room. Now, in particular, what I am talking about is if you do have a show or if you have a little something that you need to do, is you do have to plan enough time to be able to eat in the main dining room. Now, typically it should take you about 90 minutes to eat in the main dining room. It can be done a little bit quicker. Sometimes we've actually been in and out in as little as 60 minutes, but not usually less than that. And even at that, sometimes we're actually skipping dessert in the main dining room, which I don't think is really the worst thing. We can have dessert like after a show. However, if you do have a show, if you have a specific reason that you need to leave a little bit more quickly, do not be afraid to let your waiter know. You actually should let your waiter know that you'd like an expedited service. They definitely can do this for you. And of course, if you do have a show and if you have a reason that maybe you're not going to be able to sit as long in the main dining room, it's okay to go to the buffet or even to go to a casual restaurant. There are definitely other options on a cruise. Number four, I feel like this might rile people up a little bit, but it's not dressing appropriately for the main dining room. Now, don't get very upset with me. What I mean is there is a cruise line dress code. However, it really is much less formal than it was in the past. Now, some people would like it to be a little bit more formal. Other people would like it to be a little bit more casual. However, there kind of are a few ground rules. So some of the things that you really just need to know because you can actually be turned away from the dining room. They can ask you to go back to your cabin and to change 
is a few things. Well, firstly, on some cruise lines, you're not allowed to wear shorts to the main dining room. Some cruise lines that are particularly strict about this can be Celebrity and even Holland America. And of course, there are a few others as well. Please let me know your experience in the comments below if you've had any experience either way with this. Something else to note is some items of clothing, well, it's likely that you'll be turned away or asked to go back to your cabin to change. So some of those things are tank tops for men, uh, bathing suits and any pool wear, flip-flops, cover-ups. So all of those things just aren't really great dining room attire. Now something that does surprise a lot of people is you can wear jeans in the main dining room. So just make sure that they're clean, that they're nice jeans, but that usually is not a problem at all. And one more thing, always bring, I think at least one pair of pants, so jeans are fine, and at least one for men like collared shirts. So something like a polo style shirt. In some cases for some specialty dining restaurants, you sometimes can be asked to wear a collared shirt rather than a plain or a graphic t-shirt. Now I feel like dress codes have changed so much that a lot of people do have some questions about this. If you'd like to see a video about dress codes that we go into like what are the dress codes like right now, please let me know in the comments below. Number five, not checking out where your table is in the main dining room on embarkation day. Now, if you have traditional dining, this is very important. If you have open dining, this is probably not relevant to you. But if you have traditional dining, it's a good idea on the very first day of the cruise to go to the main dining room in the afternoon. So usually at around three o'clock or so, you can go see the maitre d' and you can ask where your table is located. They'll usually point that table out. So if you'd like to sit near the window, for instance, this is a good time to ask for that. If you see you're sitting at a table that's very close maybe to the waiter station and you don't like that, you can ask for that to be changed as well. Number seven, this is a really important one if you're on a group cruise or if you're cruising with other people and you're a large party don't assume that you can always sit together. Actually, most of the time, this is going to be a little bit difficult. Now you can still sit at the same time, but you may not be able to sit in the same section of the restaurant, in particular, if you do not have traditional dining. Traditional dining is really the best way to try to get tables that are near each other. However, Otherwise, what I suggest you do is you sort of split up into smaller groups. So maybe if you're a total of 20 people, for instance, you do separate into groups of six and eight and four, and you can sit at separate tables in the dining room. And usually the largest table that a main dining room will have will be for 10 or for 12 people, but they won't have many tables like that. So this is a reason to just be a little bit flexible if you are a large group and consider booking traditional dining. Number seven, if you have allergies or food restrictions, a big mistake to make is not to let the cruise line know in advance. Now this is something that you can note on your booking. So you can do this with your travel agent or you might be able to do this on the app as well. This is really something very important. In particular, if you do have food allergies or even if you have a food dietary restriction, for instance, if you are kosher, you do really want to let the cruise line know in advance. However, once you are on the cruise, you'll want to let the maitre d' know as well. Oftentimes what they can do in particular, let's say you do have a food allergy, is the chef or the maitre d' can go over the menu with you. Sometimes what they'll ask you to do is to choose a menu item in advance. So maybe the day before you can actually choose what you're going to eat the next day. This way they can make sure that they do prepare that safely for you. And if you are vegan or vegetarian or gluten-free, this is something important to note as well and to talk with the maitre d' as well. Now on the main dining room menu, if you're vegan or vegetarian, there usually is at least one menu option for you. But I have heard of some cruise lines having an alternate menu for vegetarians. Please let me know if you've ever seen this before. Please Please let me know your experience in the comments below. Number eight, a big mistake not to make, especially if you want the absolute best food in the main dining room, is to not ask your waiter or server for their suggestions. Now, honestly, even sometimes what I do is I ask them for their honest suggestions because sometimes they're told to push certain items, but I ask them, what do you really think? What are people really liking? What are people returning? What are people not eating as much? And they'll usually give you the honest truth. So they will know if the steak is quite tough, for instance, and if a lot of people are giving that feedback. They also know if a particular soup is just absolutely amazing. We were on a cruise once and our waiter had told us that 
that particular chef, their specialty was the mushroom soup and it was absolutely to die for and we should definitely order it. And he was right. And of course, if you try the server's suggestions and it's not to your liking and you wanna order something else, you definitely can do so. Now I have two more and then I have a little bit of a bonus that I think you're going to like. Number nine, not going to the specialty restaurants because you've already paid for the food. Now I know when we book a cruise, we've already paid in a way for the food in the main dining room, in the buffet, in those casual restaurants that are included. And sometimes, well, we might feel like, do we really wanna pay extra for that specialty restaurant? However, in many cases, that specialty restaurant that you might be paying maybe between $25 and sometimes $45 or even $50 for would be much more expensive if you were eating that same food at a restaurant on land. And in our experience, most of the time, those specialty restaurants have been well worth the cost. In addition to the food being really good, it is usually a more intimate atmosphere. It's a little bit of a special service. You'll find, I think, especially if you are celebrating a special occasion, that going to that specialty restaurant can be well worth the money. Number 10, never eating in the main dining room for breakfast or for lunch. Now, a lot of times people only think of the main dining room in terms of eating for dinner. However, the main dining room is open. I think it's every day usually for breakfast and for lunch. Sometimes it may be open only on sea days, depending on your cruise line. But those lunches, oftentimes they're really good. And we've been on some cruises where they have sort of a fast lunch, almost a pub style lunch that you can be in and out in 30 minutes to you know 45 minutes or so. Really, really good meals, great service and the breakfast in particular. Just think about sitting down uh, in a dining room, maybe having a mimosa, a nice specialty coffee while you have your breakfast served to you and you get to avoid all of that chaos that you have at the buffet. It is a really nice start to the day. Okay, here's the bonus one. And this could really add something extra to your meals in the main dining room is don't assume there aren't some off menu items that you can order. And what I mean is there are just a few things. It doesn't have to be complicated items, but there are a few things that may not be on the main dining room menu, but you can order. Some of those things are fruit plates. So don't assume that for dessert, you have to only order these like sweet decadent desserts, although those are really good. But if you wanna make it a little bit healthy, order a fruit plate with it. We do that every night when we're on a cruise and you might wanna order a cheese plate. So that makes a really nice appetizer or maybe instead of a dessert, you may prefer to have a cheese plate. And another fun tip is consider ordering off the children's menu. Sometimes there are some really decadent desserts. Think ice cream sundae, banana split, decadent cookies, those can all be on the children's menu. So why not take a look? Now, please let me know some of your main dining room tips and tricks and even mistakes to avoid. Please let me know down in the comments below. Now I'm gonna leave a video right after this one all about the main dining room secrets and tips that you'll also wanna know. So that is coming up next. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.